Hola amigos, ¿cómo están? Bienvenidos a un nuevo video. Yo soy Mariana Botello y como lo pueden ver en este momento, estoy con Naomi Novik. Y bueno, le vamos a hacer una entrevista. Vino a México y Urano me dio la oportunidad de esta entrevista y estoy súper feliz. Ella es autora de Una Educación Mortal y la serie Temerario. Yo he leído Una Educación Mortal, me encantó y es por eso que estoy súper feliz de poder hacer esta entrevista. I would like to know which was the first idea that came to your mind to make this incredible world, like the, the seed. So there were three different pieces that uh, that came into the building of the Scalamans. Mm -hmm. um, one was Harry Potter and more broadly the magic boarding school trope. And one part was the folk legend of the Scalamans itself, which is a school run by the devil for wizards where he takes the soul of the last graduate mm -hmm. as payment. Um, which that legend I learned of when I was about 10 years old, and I yeah. found it in the footnotes to the annotated Dracula. Okay. Because Dracula supposedly went to the Scalamots um, in, the, in the novel. And the last piece was uh, The Ones Who Walk Away from Omelas by Ursula Le Guin. And those three, three inspirations were the most immediate ones for for this world was there some influence from inferno from dante dante alighieri because i feel oh, when i was yeah reading i it, can it see the like, layers okay. of hell right yeah. i can see and and well, uh, as you go down it starts getting creepier worse so, and worse yeah, yes. so. yeah i mean obviously i think there's there's probably a similar There are similar themes, right? Uh -huh. It's it's um, the Scalamonts, the folk legend is, of course, a medieval Christian era legend, right? It's got the devil. It's got this idea that you're losing your soul yeah. to study these dark arts, um, to gain these dark powers. So I feel like that might not have been a direct influence, but obviously I, I have read the Inferno and that's that's in my head. So, okay. Yeah. Maybe there was something. Yeah. When you start writing um, the series, Did you already know how you wanted it to end? No, no, I never, I never know. Um, I start with the first line and I then figure out the second line and then I figure out the third line. Um, over time, the, the more novels I've written, I now am able to kind of, to start seeing ahead sooner. I started to get a sense of what the ending would be vaguely, probably towards the end of The Last Graduate. Okay. Um, I did know part of the ending of The Last Graduate. I knew that the, at the end of The Last Graduate, well, I don't want to spoil anyone, uh, but I knew a sort of large event that was going to happen at the end of The Last Graduate. Mm -hmm. um, I did not know the exact ending uh, until I got there and wrote it. And then I was like, well, that's the ending and people are <laughs> going to be really mad at me. <laughs> and, and the exact ending, the exact way that it was going to end, I didn't figure out until... Almost literally, I was writing the scene. You build these really complex worlds and stories. Um, how do you close the stories? What, why there's not a third book in the book is uh, in you the know, a fourth book? Right? Yeah. Um, you know, I believe in endings. For me, when a story ends in a satisfying way, um, it gives you a sense of completion. Mm -hmm. And ideally, for me, the perfect ending makes you suddenly say, oh, now I want to go back and reread from the beginning and experience the whole story in a slightly different way now that I know where everything's going. And even if you don't literally reread it, that you can sort of re-experience -re it um, and that you things suddenly become different. Um, and I feel like there were a lot of things in Golden Enclaves which I felt like changed your perspective on events in the previous two books. Okay. Um, and... For me, the thing is, so once I've done an ending, once I have created an ending that achieves that goal, um, that's the end of the story for me. It is finished. I have written the end. And it doesn't mean that I could never write another story in this universe, mm -hmm. but it would be a totally different story. Um, it might be with different characters. It might be with the same characters, but it might be like 30 years in the future or something. I don't know. But this is the story that I had in me to write at the time. And so I wrote it. Now it's done. And now... Uh, I have to write the next story that I can write. Okay, and, and related to this question, um, have you ever had second thoughts on why did I grow this? I could have grown it this other way, maybe. 
No, like no, to go back and change I don't the story. Believe, I don't believe that. I think that's I think that's wrong. Um, you know, as a writer, I think once you finish, you have to learn to finish things, and once you finish them, they're gone. They're 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 out in the world. Okay. And of course, I don't. There's no work of art so perfect that it could not be improved in some way for someone. But typically, you know, a change that you might make that might make it better for one person might make it worse for someone else. Yeah. And so I feel very strongly that when I've written something, if there's things in it that I that I look back on and think, oh, that, that could have been better, that's not a thing that I would want to actively change, typically. It's more like that's that's that goes into the next book, right? That's yeah. what you do. You learn from one project and you take it on to the next book. You don't sort of sit spinning your wheels inside the same project forever. What's your process for creating those um, strong, real characters, including the school? Because for me, the yeah. school is a yeah, character itself. Yeah, the school it's is still... a character. Yeah. Um, the, my general process for everything uh, is that I have the characters and the world build one another. So, for instance, you know, I start with the first line. I, I decided Orion Lake had to die the second time he saved my life. So they're in some place, they're in a place, and I knew they were in the Scalamonts um, because that was sort of the starting point. But then, all right, so what's going on? What is he saving her life from? Then I get the soul leader. Why is she so angry? What about this situation has made her mad? Oh, he's melted it all over her floor. And in fact, for her, dealing with a dirty floor is harder than dealing with a horrifying monster. Like she could get, she could have taken care of the horrifying monster. She could not take care of the floor um, without lots of suffering. So these pieces, right now I know there are monsters in this universe. I know that she's in this little tiny dormitory room. Um, I know that Orion is hunting these mouths. And that tells me something about, you know, so what does she do next? What does that, you know, she, she needs to clean up this mess. How does she do it? You know, the book's coming to her out of the void, right? And then her reactions tell me more about her. And that process, I think, of building world and character together in an organic way where they're sort of passing the ball back and forth, right? The character decides what to do. That tells me about the character. Action is what reveals character. Yeah, show them too. Right. How do you choose their names? They're, they have really unique names. They just come up to your mind? Um, often. Sometimes I have a character where the name does not land for me for a while, and I have, to, I have to just sort of arbitrarily put a name on them, and then writing it for a while just makes it stick. With Elle, you know, I, her name came to me literally. I was writing that that sentence where Orion's like, gal, and she's like, you know, and I knew he was going to get her name wrong. So her name had to be long and sort of elaborate. You know, I sort of figured out her mother, like her mother had to be somebody who would name her daughter Galadriel. Okay. Right? And obviously, as soon as I thought of Galadriel, I, I was thinking of Galadriel, I think, because of that, of that famous scene, right, where Galadriel refuses the one ring, right? She refuses to be a dark queen. Yeah. Um, and instead, she chooses to, to not be the Dark Queen. Um, and in a way, that's the choice that Elle herself has to make. Um, and then also, her character had to be somebody who would name their child Galadriel, and a traumatized 17-year-old who loved Tolkien so much is exactly the person who would name their child Galadriel, right? So that told me about her mom. Um, and Elle's sort of fraught relationship with her name is also in there, right? But those are all things that, in a way, some of that is explanation after the fact. Okay. Uh, you know, I don't actually know how sometimes why I've done something. The, I don't think out a sentence before I write it. I just type it out. The brain and the hands are connected. Um, in the same way that, you know, when you're speaking, you don't think out the entire sentence in your head and then speak it, right? You're just speaking. Yeah. The ideas are coming out. Um, and that's what happens to me with writing. And when that happens, what it comes out, I look at it and sometimes I'm like, yeah, that's the right answer. And sometimes I change it. But uh, with Galadriel, I was like, yes, that's absolutely the right name. Okay. The last one. Uh, we already talked about this, but I would like to include it in the video. Um, can you yeah, tell us about the metaphysical part? That's how I can yeah. express it of uh, scholomancy yeah, like so, so how... the the fundamental way the fundamental rules of the magic system right of the world of the scholomancy is that 
um, you have to build the power, the mana, to do whatever it is that you want to accomplish. Um, and you have to believe that it's going to work. And when I say believe, I mean that you have to know, um, in, not in a faith way, you have to know it the same way that you know, we believe in cars. Yes, cars exist. I know that if I get into a car and turn it on, it's gonna turn on and run. That's, that's, it's not like believing in God, right? It's a very different kind of belief. So that's the kind of belief that you have to have in magic to work. Because otherwise, right, like this structure would not work in the real world. It would just fall down. Mm -hmm. Half of what's holding it up is magic. There's, there is real stuff there, there's real metal, but there's not quite enough of it. The scale is all wrong. The architecture is not fully you know, realized. Um, and so a lot of what's holding it up is the belief and magic of the students inside it. Thank you, Naomi, for this interview. It was great. I love your books. I love Scolomencia. Yeah. And you're a great author and person. <laughs> Thank you so much. Y bueno, amigos, eso fue todo por este video. Espero que les haya gustado mucho. Ya saben que pueden dejar su like, su comentario y suscribirse a este canal. Los quiero muchísimo. Les mando besos. Y bye. bye.